Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos, so these are a variety um, of managers um, on our um, agenda, you know, who could uh, replace um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, at the football club, because obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is under um, intense uh, pressure um, at Manchester United, reflecting um, on our uh, disastrous uh, start uh, to the season, you know, we are... Uh, we have um, enjoyed um, our worst start to uh, Premier League season uh, for uh, three uh, decades. You know, we are 11 uh, games um, into the Premier League season. You know, we've only registered 13 points from a possible 33. So in that aspect, you know, we've, won, we've, won, we've only won three games. We've drawn four and we've lost four. And we know where uh, that's uh, nowhere near uh, good enough uh, to our uh, standards. But I think, you know, the pressure now is back on Oligan and Solskjaer anyway, reflecting um, on our 1-0 uh, 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 defeat uh, to Bournemouth um, at the weekend. Um... Because obviously, you know, before uh, that game, I think, you know, the pressure um, had eased off um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, on, in, uh, when we was on that uh, three-match uh, winning uh, period. Uh, because actually, you know, we was uh, four uh, games um, unbeaten and it looks like, you know, Manchester United, you know, were on uh, the comeback. You know, we got a very positive result against Liverpool, you know, drew them 1-0. You know, we're the only team this season, you know, to uh, take uh, many uh, points um, off Liverpool in the Premier League. You know, then obviously, you know, we beat Empires and Belgrade in the Europa League 1-0. Wasn't the best of before but still got the win. <laughs> And then we went and uh, beat uh, Norwich, which was I thought was um, a very, very good uh, performance. Analyzing it, I think that's Manchester United's uh, best performance um, of the season. And then, um, you know, we beat uh, Chelsea by two goals to one um, in the Cowboy Cup. And I thought, you know, that was that was um, another uh, good uh, performance uh, by uh, Manchester United. But now um, it is uh, back uh, to uh, square one. But, you know, I've given you my perception on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And, uh, you know, I even did say in that four-game period that I still don't think he's uh, the right uh, man uh, to elevate uh, Manchester United forward. You know, I've got some aspects of me, you know, I do credit him. You know, I have got some um, element um, of concern um, about him. I will credit Solskjaer in that four-game period, though. You know, we showed a lot of tactical flexibility and he did, you know, uh, tactically, you know, uh, get it uh, right. And I do believe that Manchester United uh, do look better uh, with three um, at the back. But obviously in the game against Bournemouth, you know, Solskjaer reverted back to the 4-2-3-1 uh, formation. And I did say, you know, the, that 4-2-3-1 formation hasn't been working because for the vast majority of the season, you know, we have been uh, going out uh, that 4 2 3 1 formation. But Solskjaer actually, you know, um, admitted that, you know, he selected uh, the wrong uh, team um, against uh, Bournemouth. He actually described uh, the defeat um, as a step back uh, for uh, Manchester United. But, you know, we are now 10th uh, firm in the league. <laughs> You know, where we're seven points uh, behind top four, uh, we're 18 points uh, behind uh, Liverpool. So I've actually now uh, fully uh, disregarded uh, the top four because I did say, you know, that's uh, my expectations this season, you know, is a. Uh, you know, to uh, finish um, in that uh, top four. So in that aspect, uh, we can uh, get back um, into the uh, Champions League, you know, because obviously last season they were failed uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League. Now, obviously, due to um, our um, inconsistency, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, is very pessimistic about, you know... Uh, about uh, uh, January uh, signings because it's going to be hard for us, you know, to get the right calibre players next year, you know, uh, due to um, our um, inconsistency. But I did say anyway, our recruitment has been uh, very poor uh, for uh, several years, you know, and I think in that aspect, of the vast majority of the blame uh, stems uh, from the board. And I think, like I said on my video yesterday, you know, I need, we need to see, you know, uh, fundamental changes at, Man changes at Manchester United. You know, we need to get this current board out and we need to recommend a new board in. I think this board also didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough uh, during uh, the summer as they did uh, Matthew um, Shaw. Um, you know, I think we also need to get Ed Woodward out um, of the football club because he's also a liability. So in in uh, that aspect, um, he's compatible to the board because I don't think Ed Woodward is reliable to oversee our transfer business. He hasn't been liable to oversee our transfer business for a very long time. You know, for, due to our inconsistencies, well, I think definitely Solskjaer in, is accountable for some of it. Um, and I think also some of the bl players um, are uh, to blame. So obviously, you know, everyone um, is to uh, blame, you know, to be um, quite um, honest here. But in my for my perception, <laughs> the vast majority of the blame uh, does uh, stem uh, from uh, the board. But, you know, I think, you know, the coach staff isn't good enough at Manchester United. The manager isn't good enough. You know, I think there's still certain players that do uh, need to uh, leave uh, the football club next year, despite the fact that a lot of players um, have left uh, since uh, Molly and Solskjaer's um, arrival. Um, but I think, from my perception, you know, we need at least five to six more signings next year, maybe even more, if we are to be back uh, to being um, a competitive elite uh, level uh, football club. And I think probably another four um, or five more players uh, do uh, need to uh, 
already part of the football club. You know, there's still deficiencies in the squad uh, that I do uh, need to be um, addressed. You know, obviously we need to um, add a uh, depth um, in our uh, midfield. We probably need uh, two uh, central midfielders. You know, we definitely need to recruit a replacement for Ander Herrera. You know, we also need a striker, you know, someone that can come in and assure his goals and someone, you know, that can be effective in the box and someone, you know, that can uh, create uh, chances because, you know, this is something Manchester United have been struggling with this season, you know, is creating chances. Um, it has uh, been um, an element um, of concern. And this probably one of the, this is probably the reason why, you know, we haven't uh, been uh, scoring um, enough uh, goals. <laughs> But yeah, you know, maybe some games this season, Man United um, have created chances, but we just haven't uh, been uh, ruthless enough um, in front um, of goal. And in, you know, in some shades of, of some games this season, has actually you know, rep uh, replicated last season, because last season we created a lot of chances, but we just didn't seem to um, have uh, that uh, clinical, clinical uh, element. So hopefully, you know, we can get uh, the right uh, calibre players next year. You know, if Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still to be at Manchester United next year, I do presume that the club will give him a substantial amount to spend. I do presume we'll give him from between... I think we'll probably spend from between 250 to 300 million pounds uh, next year. Um, I think we'll try and bring a couple of players in, in January, but I think we'll do uh, the vast uh, majority of our uh, transfer business uh, next summer. Um, but, you know, we did recommend three good players to the squad during the summer, and I think, you know, they're totally blameless, you know, um, even though we've been inconsistent, because I think, you know, they've all enjoyed fantastic starts to their Manchester United careers of Daniel James and wan Bissaka um, and Harry uh, Maguire. And it is good, you know, that we did um, address some of the problematic areas uh, during uh, the course of the summer, but it was a shame, you know, we didn't um, address um, all of uh, the problematic um, areas. But for me, Solskjaer, you know, needs to uh, leave uh, Manchester United. He needs to be sacked by the football club. Um, I don't think he will be sacked um, at this uh, present uh, time. Um... Because I still think Ed Woodward is 100%, you know, backing him. Solskjaer still believe he insists he's the right uh, manager uh, for uh, Manchester United. I think it probably will cost the club a substantial amount of money to sack Solskjaer. Um, I don't think it'll cost us as much to sack Solskjaer as it did to cost us to sack Jose Mourinho. Because I, think, I can't remember, did we pay around 19 or uh, 20 million pounds uh, to uh, get uh, rid of uh, Jose Mourinho? You know, I can't uh, remember. So, these are um, a list of managers um, on our agenda, you know, who could replace me at the football club, like I uh, mentioned um, at the beginning um, of the video. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of speculation going on um, about uh, Max uh, Maligre. Uh, now, maybe a lot of Manchester United fans, you know, do believe he would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, the football club. Now, also, Arsenal have identified. Max Allegra is one of their candidates to replace uh, Umrah Emre because obviously Umrah Emre is under um, intense pressure at Arsenal just like Solskjaer is um, at Manchester United. Now as I've said to you, Max Allegra um, is managerless um, at the moment. Um, he stepped down um, as Juventus manager um, at the end um, of last season. Um, obviously he had um, a five-year tenure uh, with Juventus. You know, he won the vast majority of his silverware with Juventus. And um, he obviously, you know, progressed uh, Juventus uh, to two uh, Champions League uh, finals. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's. Uh, I think he said the other week he was learning English in preparation for his potential move because Max Allegri um, has actually you know, never ever uh, managed or he never uh, played um, in the Premier League. He's actually so far spent the entirety of his managerial career in Italy. I think he's been managing uh, since uh, 2003. Um, but he actually is emula he emulated up because actually he started uh, by uh, managing small various um, Italian clubs and that. Um, I think he's around uh, 52 uh, years of age. Um, it, it did actually say um, quite a few weeks back now that we actually identified Max Allegri as one of our primary candidates to uh, replace uh, Solskjaer because it actually said that Max Allegri you know, was in negotiations with Manchester United. You know, regarding you know what he would earn if he was regarding his salary. You know what he would earn if he came to Man United, and it said um, he'd earn nearly around seven million pounds. Um, it also said he wanted to recommend Mario Mandzukic um, and you know Emre Chan with him. Uh, if, you know, and he also wanted to recommend uh, Patrice Everin um, as one of his uh, coaching uh, staff. And obviously, Patrice Evra is a former Manchester United uh, player. Um, but yeah, you know, do you think he would be the right man, you know, to take to take over Manchester United? Obviously, you know, if we, you know, if he if he was to be recommended in, obviously, you know, he would be our uh, fifth uh, permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. Um, obviously, there's still uh, talks about Mauricio um, uh, Pochettino now. Um, 
he's obviously under pressure at Tottenham. Um, don't forget, you know, after you know the sacking him of Jose Mourinho um, in December um, of last year, um, obviously, you know, Mauricio Pochettino was our top priority, and it was looking likely, you know, he was going to be coming uh, to uh, Manchester United. Uh, but obviously, you know, um, our, and we also went in for Zinedine Zidane. But, and there was quite a few other managers at that point in our agenda, but obviously, you know, our preference was Solskjaer because obviously Solskjaer knows the, you know, traditions of the club. We just obviously saw it as, you know, Solskjaer was um, a cheaper solution because he didn't really pay that much, you know, to recommend him in uh, from Mould. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we did uh, go in uh, for Mauricio uh, Pochettino and a lot of people believe, you know, he would be uh, the right uh, candidate uh, for uh, Manchester United. You know, Pochettino is well Premier League proven. Um, obviously now he's into his, he's been at Tottenham five years, but he's into his uh, sixth season uh, with Tottenham. Um, obviously he spent a substantial amount at Tottenham as Pochettino. The only element of concern about Pochettino is that, you know, he hasn't uh, won out um, in terms um, of silverware. Uh, but he's done really well with Tottenham mainly. You know, he also had a good short tenure, you know, when he was at Southampton before Tottenham. He actually began his uh, managerial career uh, with Espanyol. You know, if we had to go in for Mauricio Pochettino, I think, you know, we'll obviously have to pay around £32 million in compensation, you know, to recommend him in uh, to Man United, despite the fact that I don't think he's got a release clause um, in his contract, because I think Pochettino signed a new contract last summer, um, and he's, um, I think it was a five-year contract, so... Worth around uh, eight point uh, five uh, million uh, pounds every year, but I do believe if the job you know became uh, vacant, um, you know um, Man United um, and Pochettino you know was sacked by Tottenham, I think he would grasp uh, the opportunity you know to come to a big club uh, like uh, Man United. But obviously at the time went in for him after the sacking of Jose Mourinho, Pochettino had no intentions um, of leaving Tottenham, and you know like I've took in, like I've taken into account before. Daniel Lever, you know, is um, a very um, hard uh, negotiator when it comes to, you know, trying to get the pursuit of uh, any players from Tottenham or, you know, a manager and that, you know, he's really um, hard uh, to uh, negotiate uh, with. So I just will, you know, uh, tear that um, into, into the um, equation. Um, some people believe as well uh, that uh, Chris uh, White, uh, Wilder uh, from Sheffield United, you know, would be uh, the right man for Manchester United um, and Arsenal. I think this was according to uh, Tony Carrasco, was it, uh, yesterday. Um, obviously, Chris Wilder um, is current uh, manager uh, of Sheffield United. Um, I think he ma started managing Sheffield United in 2016. Um, he actually you know, uh, started managing Sheffield United when, when there was um, in League One. So he's progressed Sheffield United from League One to six in the Premier League. So you've got to admire that you know, he has uh, done a really, really uh, good uh, job uh, with them. Um, obviously, before I was at Sheffield United, he uh, managed um, Northampton. He also managed Oxford for quite a lot of years. He managed Oxford, also managed Halifax, and then uh, began his uh, managerial career uh, with Alfred Town. So, do you think he would be the right candidate uh, for Manchester United? You know, Chris uh, Wilder. Um, <laughs> You know, so there is um, a lot of uh, managers, you know, um, on our uh, current um, agenda, but who would be uh, the right uh, man uh, for uh, Manchester United? Uh, don't forget there's been um, a lot of talks about, um, you know, uh, uh, Jose Mourinho, you know, taking over the reins um, at Arsenal. Um, I think Mourinho um, has um, admitted that, um, you know, if the job did come become uh, vacant um, at Ars Arsenal, you know, he would be interested in uh, taking um, over um, at Arsenal. I think reports recently said that... Um, Jose Mourinho um, had met up uh, with Arsenal's head um, of football or something like that, you know, to discuss, you know, about him possibly, you know, taking over uh, Arsenal Football Club. Um, but yeah, do you think, you know, Jose Mourinho, you know, would uh, do um, a good uh, job uh, with Arsenal? Um, obviously, you know, Jose Mourinho, as you guard, is one of the best uh, managers um, in the world. Um, reflect on his success and, you know, he's obviously had a fantastic pedigree. Obviously, Jose Mourinho, so far in his managerial career, has won about uh, 25 uh, major um, honours. So, obviously, you know, he won the Europe League and League Cup with Man United. Obviously, you know, he had a two and a half year uh, tenure um, at Manchester United, uh, did uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, you know, he also won the Champions League with Porto um, and Inter Milan, you know. Obviously, he was at Chelsea quite a few years. You know, he won about uh, three Premier League uh, titles uh, with Chelsea. Um, and maybe his, his philosophy, you know, would be a uh, right uh, for um, Arsenal football. Club. I know it didn't work out for him, you know, during his time uh, with Man United. It didn't work out on it because, obviously, I explained the reasons why he's... Uh, uh, why it didn't work out for him at Man United because obviously he had bad disputes with the board and bad disputes with the top players. Um, 
you know, the board weren't back in the signings that I wanted to recommend into the football club last summer. Um, and this is why, you know, it just didn't uh, work out um, under uh, Jose and Mourinho. But, you know, he's actually been our longest serving manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. But, you know... And I think, you know, Manchester United uh, do uh, need to uh, get um, a director um, of football in. Um, and that's also um, another mistake from the football club was not getting a director of football in because I think, you know, that's one of the structural changes uh, that we do uh, need um, in the football club. You know, because don't forget uh, during uh, the course of um, the summer, there was quite a few former Manchester United uh, players uh, linked uh, with that director's role um, at the football club. Um, don't forget, you know, there was recent uh, reports about Edwin van der Sar, you know, uh, the other week about possibly returning to United um, as the director of um, fo football. But I did say to you, didn't I, you know, if we are to recommend um, a director of football, and, you know, we need someone who knows the traditions of the club, someone who's got that experience, you know, someone someone who's obviously, you know, you know got, you know, the right philosophy, um, and someone, you know, who would be reliable to oversee our transfer business, and definitely, you know, Edwin van der Sey, you know, uh, would be uh, the right uh, candidate, but Solskjaer, don't forget, um, I think during the international break, actually defended the club's current structure, um, and he actually, you know, uh, believes that, you know, uh, we don't uh, need um, a new uh, director um, of football, but you could argue be safe with a uh, got that direct of football in during the summer, then maybe in that aspect, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, would have uh, been uh, back tomorrow, but, you know, um, you know, we didn't uh, get uh, that uh, direct um, of football in. Um, obviously, you know, Man United um, have had um, a lot of um, injuries, you know, uh, this season. So, obviously, in that aspect, anywhere, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, alterations in the squad. You know, obviously, you know, there's still um, some players there uh, that are out with injury now. Obviously, you know, some um, have regained their uh, full finish. You know, it's good that, you know, Anthony Martial now um, is back. And, you know, since he's, since he's regained full fitness, you know, I think Anthony Martial's hit form. He's already scored uh, two goals, you know, since he uh, come uh, back. Um, and I think he's a very imperative player for Manchester United, is Anthony Martial. You know, he's uh, now into his uh, fifth season um, at the football club. Um um, obviously, he scored 52 goals for Manchester United in all competitions, you know, since his arrival uh, from Monaco, you know, back in uh, 2015. Uh, but he's doing uh, really, really well, um, and he is um, only uh, 23 uh, years in of age. Obviously, it got confirmed um, at the start of this season that Anthony Martial um, has been uh, given uh, that number nine shirt because he seems to be uh, more effective um, in that uh, central uh, position, uh, does uh, Anthony uh, Martial. Um, but, you know, we've got a few players, you know, that can uh, play, in, uh, play in that number nine. You've got Rashid that can play in the number nine. You've got Greenwood uh, that can play in the number nine. But for me, Martial is more effective, definitely, um, in that uh, central uh, position. Um, but, yeah, and he, he enjoyed a good start to the season anyway. Um, obviously, you know, before um, he had uh, sustained uh, that uh, fire um, injury. Um, to be fair, I've been very impressed there uh, with Marcus Rashford recently. I think he's done uh, really, really well. He has rejuvenated himself. Because from the for the majority of this season, um, I have uh, been uh, criticising uh, Marcus Rashford, you know, reflect on his uh, bad uh, performances. But I still said when he was perform when he when he was performing bad, I would still say you know he is uh, the long term uh, solution uh, for uh, Manchester United. Um, he is now obviously now uh, twenty two uh, years in of age. He's Marcus Rashford, but when he's on form, he can get them runs in behind. You know, um, he's good at um, leading their lines, uh, but still uh, very very um, essential. Um, he's Marcus Rashford. So I've been very very impressed with him. Uh, Recently, here um, he's actually you now scored 50, 52 goals now for Manchester United in all competitions. Um, as Rashford so far, he spent the entirety of his career with Man United. I don't know if he's orchestrating on you know spending the rest of his uh, career from now with Manchester United. I don't think he will be. Well, that's uh, my uh, perception. Uh, maybe he will. Um, but he's been a United player since the age of seven. You know, he's been in the senior squad with us uh, since uh, two thousand and sixteen. Um, but um, yeah. Um, you know, Solskjaer, as you all know, confirmed uh, that Paul Pogba um, is out uh, for um, at least another month. So Solskjaer has confirmed that Paul Pogba, you know, is not expected back um, until uh, December. Um, obviously, you know, Paul Pogba um, is out uh, with an ankle injury. And this ankle injury has been surrounding the player for a matter of weeks now, a uh, number of weeks now. You know, Paul Pop has missed like the last missed missed uh, the last nine of the missed nine of the last eleven uh, with this uh, injury, and he has uh, been um, a big uh, miss um, as Paul Pop. Uh, um, and I think he's probably you know one of the players you know that will consider leaving Manchester United next year because um, obviously Paul Pop wanted to leave uh, for the entirety of the summer, but obviously you know didn't. Um, but I still believe his preference um, is to uh, make a move uh, to uh, Real Madrid. Um, but he is um, a very, very um, imperative uh, player. Um, obviously, you know, 
Uh, Matic Shaw to Anzabino, they're still um, out uh, of injuries. Um, I think Luke Shaw now um, is closer to uh, regaining uh, full fitness. I think he's actually now back um, in training, like Solskjaer confirmed that. Luke Shaw um, is not far away now from returning to the squad. Um, he is actually now um, our first choice left back, but despite the fact he's our first choice left back, like I've mentioned to you guys on a regular basis, a lot of Manchester United fans now do believe that Brandon Williams is a better uh, solution uh, than Luke Shaw because obviously Brandon Williams is predominantly a left back and obviously he's really stepped up to the plate recently. You know, Brandon Williams has made around three appearances uh, for uh, Manchester United uh, this season and obviously reflect on his performances. I did say you know, he will um, earn uh, more uh, first team uh, promotions and he's done really, really well and you know he is um, only uh, 19 years of age. Again, I thought Brandon Williams was our best player in, in the game against Bournemouth for the weekend. Um, he also was fantastic in the game against Chelsea and Solskjaer has actually you know, praised him uh, for his uh, fantastic uh, performances but he's definitely you know, one of the young upcoming players um, I think who I do think you know will become um, a success um, at the football club Brandon Williams but like I've said to you you know we have got a lot of uh, young players um, in the squad you know that are developing um, and trying to um, improve um, at Manchester United you know I have got some element of concerns about certain young upcoming players so this is why I did take into account that um This is why I did say to you know it would be beneficial you know to for us to orchestrate loaning uh, some of the young upcoming uh, players um, out um, in January. Um, but I can definitely assure you know that Mason Greenwood, um, you know Brandon Williams, I presume, and Tuan Zebe, they'll all become uh, successes um, at the football club. You know I don't really have a perception um, on James uh, Garner yet uh, because I haven't really you know seen him play enough to have really um, to have really a perception on him. Um, I thought it was a. Uh, I thought he did really, really well on his full debut in the 1-0 win um, against Partizan in uh, Belgrade um, in the Europa League. But I'm sure that James Garnier you know, uh, will uh, get uh, more um, opportunities. Um, there is question marks around Solskjaer. Why, why hasn't he, you know, uh, you know, um, you know, started Mason Greenwood yet uh, from the start um, in the Premier League? Uh, that's another um, element um, of concern. Uh, Greenwood has made around is it seven or eight substitute appearances in the Premier League uh, so far uh, this season. But I think in the majority of the games he has been involved in this season. You know, um, he has uh, done uh, really, really well. And I think by the time Greenwood is twenty three, twenty four, I think he can uh, become a become a um, world class uh, player uh, for uh, Manchester United. Uh, but Luke Shaw, like I said, revert back to what I said. Um, he's not played since the 2 1 home defeat uh, to Crystal Palace, um, but I think it's close to regain full fitness. To Anzebe is out with a hip injury. Um, I think Solskjaer actually confirmed that Matic to Anzebe and Luke Shaw will be uh, back um, after the international break. Uh, Solskjaer did say that there was a slight chance Paul Pobber could be back for the Sheffield United game after the international break, but it's obviously you know, very, very um, unlikely. Uh, so we won't see Paul Pobber back um, in action um, until uh, December. Um, <laughs> Um, as you all know, Eric Bay is out with um, injury. Um, he's out um, until uh, the end um, of the year. Um, so he's out until the end of December with his knee injury. He sustained uh, this knee injury uh, throughout uh, pre-season. Um, Fossil Mensu um, is still out of injury. Fossil Mensu uh, has been um, out of injury uh, for quite uh, some time. But I don't think he's uh, far away from regaining full fitness. You know, Diego Dalot um, is still out with injury. You know, he sustained uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, you know, uh, this season um, as Diego uh, Dalot. Um, you know, obviously he's one of our backup options um, in that uh, right-back uh, position as Dalot. You know, he's versatile, he can play as a left-back, he can also play as a right-winner. He actually played in he played as a right-winner quite a few times uh, towards uh, the back end um, of last season. And he, did, he did actually quite well in, you know, in that uh, current uh, position because obviously last season Young uh, was our uh, first choice uh, Right back now, obviously, Alman Basaka um, is our uh, first choice uh, right back. But, you know, Dalot, um, I think it's actually no unknown anyway, you know, when he will be uh, back um, in contention. Um, you know, it will be, it's unknown when he will be uh, back um, in contention. But, yeah, you know, we have still uh, got uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, you know. But it's obviously no, not excusable, you know, w w with the way, you know, where we have uh, performed uh, this season because, you know, these are uh, games uh, that, you know, with... Um, you know, the games that, you know, we've lost this season, you know, we shouldn't have really lost any of them. You know, we shouldn't have lost uh, to Crystal Palace at home. You know, we lost 2-1 at home to Crystal Palace. That was the first time ever we lost to them in Premier League history. You know, then we, um, you know, lost to West Ham. You know, that's another game Manchester United, you know, shouldn't have lost. Um, you know, 
we've lost twice now at the London Stadium in two seasons. You know, then obviously we lost to Newcastle before the international break. That was um, another um, abysmal uh, performance. Then obviously, you know, uh, we lost uh, to Bournemouth um, of the weekend, so we shouldn't have lost um, any um, of them uh, games. You know, so it's actually, you know, quite um, embarrassing. Um, <laughs> And I'm ashamed to be a Man United fan, you know, I've been ashamed to be a Man United fan, you know, for the last uh, six um, or seven years because, you know, we have been a toxic club now uh, for um, a number um, of years. Um, but, um, yeah, but there is still players that I've, you know, I've actually, you know, uh, been um, impressed with, impressed with, you know, uh, this season, you know. I've I've been very, very impressed with Scott McTominway, you know, I've in regards to McTominway being a long-term solution for Man United, I've got element of concerns about that, but... I think he's done really, really well this season. He has been a first-team regular, but he has deserved it, you know, affecting him on his uh, good uh, performances. Um, you know, so fair play to McTominway. You know, Fred, I've actually, you know, got the same perception on Fred of what I've got of McTominway. You know, Fred, I don't know if he's a long-term solution for Man United. Um, I can definitely, you know, you know, assure that, you know, McTominway and Fred are not two world-class uh, midfielders. But, you know, Fred recently has delivered the goods for Man United. He has, he's, he's actually, you know, done uh, quite well. You know, I will agree on the aspect, you know, that Manchester United uh, did um, overpay uh, for Fred. You know, we paid just under £50 million to him last summer uh, from Shakhtar Nesk. But we're known in recent years anywhere uh, for overpaying uh, for players. You know, we overpaid for Aaron McGray. You know, we paid £80 million for him. Obviously, you know, he's the most expensive defender in the world. is is the second most expensive uh, signing um, at the football club, um, as you know, um, you know Harry uh, Maguire. Uh, but he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career and you can say he's probably addressed our defensive deficiencies. We do look slightly better uh, defensively. That's obviously, you know, um, a positive. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, I do... I also... Um, you know, I believe that, you know, we overpaid for Lukaku um, at the time, you know, we did get him from Everton uh, back in uh, 2017 um, under the Jose Mourinho era because we paid around £75 million uh, for Romelu Lukaku. You know, his pedigree also was very, very good um, in the Premier League and, you know, Lukaku enjoyed two seasons at Manchester United. You know, he enjoyed an exceptional first season, reflects on the amount of goals he scored, but he didn't really replicate that in his second season. Um, you know, some Man United fans will say it was a mistake letting him, letting him go, but obviously, you know, had to let him go because he initially uh, lost um, his place um, in the team. Um, but I'm actually you not know, happy with the money that we did generate from his departure because we got around 70 odd million. So, more or less, we, 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 we recouped the money that we did pay for him from Everton uh, back in uh, 2017. Um, so, that was a good uh, business uh, from the football club. But I think he's done really, really well. Well, you know, since he's uh, gone uh, to uh, into Milan, you know, uh, to be uh, fair to him. Um, you can say now that we also overpaid for Paul Pogba. Um, you know, we paid £8 to £9 million to him. Obviously, he's our uh, most um, expensive uh, signing. So, we're known for um, overpaying uh, for players. You know, we've also uh, invested a lot of money on players um, in the last six or seven years. In Obviously, all the managerial eras, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. So, obviously, you know, uh, we are uh, known uh, for uh, doing that. But, you know, in uh, my overarching view, you know, I would definitely you not know, give uh, Fred uh, more of uh, time um, at the football club uh, because he can be mobile and I actually think, in my I think he's actually a better uh, solution uh, than the Man United Matic, you know, some Man United fans will disagree, some believe that Matic um, is um, a better uh, solution uh, than Fred um, but yeah, and I think Solskjaer has obviously you know, confirmed um, anyway, you know, that Fred will will take uh, Paul Popper's position uh, for them a while Um but, you know, Solskjaer has actually confirmed anyway that the likes of Fred and Andres Pereira, he said, you know, they're two um, imperative players uh, for uh, the football club. Pereira had a really, really bad uh, game um, against uh, Bournemouth. But I think in a couple of, the, the couple of games before that, I thought, you know, Pereira, you know, stepped up to, to the plate. You know, he has been, you know, he has made about eight appearances in the league so far this season. Obviously, he has uh, been uh, playing um, in that uh, playmaker's uh, role, but I would still give Andres Pereira uh, more of uh, a time um, at the football club. You know, Solskjaer confirmed that Tom Way is obviously comparison to the likes of Fred and Pereira. What he means is, he's, you know, he's um, a different uh, sort um, of player. Um, yeah, that's what he means, yeah. But, you know, so you've got the vast majority of Man United fans now, you know, demanded um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out of the football club. I did say, uh, following the 1-0 defeat to Bournemouth, didn't I, on my, on my reaction at the weekend, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how Gary Neville 
Rio Ferdinand Giggs, you know, for Manchester United players, how they're going to react to, to this uh, 1-0 loss. Because Gavin Neville did say, you know, prior to the game against Bournemouth, that all it takes is for it, it all it takes is another slip up for Man United and Solskjaer you know, will be uh, back um, under um, intense uh, pressure, you know. This is what you know uh, Gavin Neville um, had said. But you know, you know, Solskjaer um, has been at Manchester United now overall uh, for around um, 11 months. So he has been at the football club uh, just um, under um, a year. You know, obviously he's been permanent manager. <coughs> he's been... Um, <coughs> he's been... Um, sorry about that. He's been permanent manager... Um, for around um, eight months. Obviously, you know, for the vast uh, majority um, of this uh, eight months, obviously, you know, um, he's enjoyed them um, a really uh, difficult, uh, you know, time uh, with a football club. Uh, and what I've seen for the vast majority of this eight months is totally comparison, you know, to what I saw, you know, uh, when Solskjaer uh, was the interim manager because obviously, you know, he was uh, the interim manager uh, for uh, three months. But, you know, he did really, really well in that three-month period because, like I said, the results were good, the performances were good, um, he got the best um, out of these uh, group of players and, like I've just said, you know, he exceeded um, expectations. Uh, you know, he won his first eight games. You know, he won 14 um, out of 19 um, in total. Um and it was absolutely uh, fantastic in that. And obviously, my, my overarching view on Solskjaer then, I, I thought he was uh, the right uh, man to elevate Manchester United forward. But obviously now, throughout this eight-month period, obviously you know, my perceptions um, have changed uh, regarding um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and that. Um, but we did really, really well uh, when he was uh, the interim uh, manager. You know, we saw glimpses of how good you know, Paul Pogba can be. You know, obviously, you know... Um, we got a fantastic 3-1 win against PSG. You know, we produced that miraculous comeback from being 2-0 down um, in the first leg. And that's obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's, you could say, most iconic uh, moment um, as a manager. Um, you know, so he did really, really well in that uh, three-month uh, period. But he's not the long-term uh, future uh, for uh, Man United. You know, maybe some Man United fans believe us getting rid of Solskjaer now, you know, wouldn't solve a lot of problems at the football club. Uh, some people still maybe believe that he needs to he needs to be given at least a couple more transfer windows. You know, we need to, you know, give him... Um, you know, we need to give him a couple more transfer windows, you know, to see who else he can uh, recommend into the football club because a massive rebuild is needed at the club. Uh, obviously, Solskjaer, you know, is still in the process of rebuilding this Manchester United team because, like I've mentioned to you guys regularly, um, that, you know, the vast majority of this team is not Solskjaer's. The vast majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's because Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players into the football club. Now, Solskjaer um, is still um, inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them. Um but I think actually the board did um, assure them at the start of this season that, you know, regardless of what happens this season, Solskjaer, you know, will, job, his job will be safe because, you know, they didn't back, they, assured, they know that they didn't back him enough uh, during uh, the course of um, the summer. So I think they assured that he will be back um, in the next uh, couple of uh, windows, you know, where uh, will uh, Solskjaer... Um, But um yeah, but um, I just don't think he's uh, the right uh, man uh, for uh, Manchester United, and I hate to say that, but you know I think the only reason you know anyway we're sticking with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at his present time is because obviously you know um, he was um, a club legend. Well, he is a club legend, should I say? And I think in that aspect, the board are soft in their stance on him. If it obviously you know was any other manager now, you know they probably you know would have been sat to by uh, the football club because I think you know we're only around what is it three or four points um, off relegation. Um, I think that's you know what we're not. That's that, that that's that's how it is now. Um, and you know, but you know, Solskjaer is tactically naive, and he's been tactically naive uh, for the vast majority of this season. I think um, prior to them three or four games where we did well, he tactically got it right. But apart from that, you know, we haven't really showed them um, any uh, tactical uh, flexibility. Um, I think some of his substitutions are also very questionable. You know, the question is, you know, why is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer not uh, still uh, playing uh, Ashley Young? I don't know why he keeps uh, playing Ashley Young. Is it some maybe because it's something to do with the injuries we've had? Um, you know, especially at them full-back positions. You know, we've had quite a lot of injuries, so maybe at Ash Young's uh, Solskjaer, sorry, um, has had no alternative but to you know to uh, play um, Ashley Young. Um, I don't know why he's actually you not know, been doing that. You know, to be um, quite um, honest with you, um, but you know, it just isn't uh, the right uh, manager. Uh, for uh, Manchester United, and you know he isn't. He isn't, and um, you know he hasn't. 
he hasn't got any intuition anyway on how to manage a big football club like Man United, despite the fact that he knows the culture of the football club. Uh, because, you know, he was a great player for Manchester United for 11 years. He flourished um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance. and um, But, you know, he just hasn't really got that managerial experience, especially not to the highest level. Because, obviously, before he came to Man United, you know, he managed Mould. And, you know, he had a really uh, short uh, ten. Well, I don't know how long his tenure was. Was it short? Was it long? I'm not too sure. But either way, he won a couple of Norwegian titles of mould. I do know that he had a really uh, short uh, tenure with Cardiff. You know, he only managed around 29 or 30 games for Cardiff. He actually you know, ended up getting Cardiff relegated. And this is, you know, why he'd been uh, sat there from uh, Cardiff. And certain Man United fans fear that if if we are to keep him for this season, Solskjaer, the thing that he couldn't replicate at Man United, you know, what he actually you know, did um, at Cardiff. I said I don't think Man United will get relegated. You know, the club's too big. There's too much money in that um, into the football club. You know, I haven't been relegated since, uh, since what, 1974, which is obviously not um, over 40-odd years ago uh, now. Um, but, yeah, I just think, you know, we do uh, need to uh, get rid of him because I think it's actually, you know, worse under the Solskjaer era than, it, than when... You know, it's worse under the Solskjaer era than when it than when it was under the Mourinho era. It's worse than it was under the Van Gaal era, and it's even worse than it was um, under the uh, David uh, Moyes um, era. And it, you know, it was bad enough under the David Moyes era. You know, David Moyes only had a really really short tenure. He didn't get it get to eleven months with Man United. So Solskjaer's actually been here longer than David Moyes was. Because David Moyes was on Man United seven months. He's actually had the shortest tenure at the football club since the uh, the Ferguson um, era. Um, it was. I think one mistake Ferguson made, and it's the only mistake he made, you know, was recommending David Moyes in, because he recommended him in at the time, um, after, you know, his uh, retirement and that, because obviously they're both Scottish, and, you know, where they both uh, got on and that. I think, you know, finished around 6th or 7th um, under uh, David uh, Moyes, um, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's even worse than it was um, under the uh, David uh, Moyes um, era. This is how uh, bad um, it's, it's obviously you know, uh, got uh, now. Um, I said, you know, Man United haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers. You know, Solskjaer's our fourth permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era. You know, three managers are, have already gone. Moyes has gone, Van Gaal has gone, and, you know, Mourinho's gone. You know, I've, I've seen no improvements um, under Solskjaer now whatsoever. You know, apart from that, you know, three-month period, you know, when he was uh, the interim uh, manager. But prior to that, I haven't really uh, seen um, any um, improvements, you know, if I'm uh, going to be uh, quite um, honest with you. And, um, but, you know, you know, everyone's to blame, in my opinion. But, um, you know, we have got uh, Partizan Belgrade, by the way, um, in the Europa League uh, this Thursday um, at Old Trafford. Um, it's our... Uh, Fourth um game of the Europa League so far we've won two games um out of three, we've won two games um out of three um in the Europa League, so far we've beaten FC Stanley one nil um, drew with uh, Altmar nil nil. I've got to say that's probably the worst performance of the season. In that particular game, we didn't register a single shot on target. Then we obviously we beat Partizan in Belgrade uh, one nil um away from home. So it's our fourth game in the Europa League. We are top of the group, top of Group L so far, which is obviously not very very good. Um, I do probably still believe that <coughs> uh, Man United uh, will uh, get uh, to uh, the knockout stages. Uh, we've got Brighton, uh, that's our next league game at Old Trafford, which I think is on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Then obviously it's the international break, and then after that we do go up um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United and Way, which is obviously not going to be a tough game, like I mentioned, because Sheffield United um, have enjoyed them a pretty uh, good uh, start uh, to the season. Um, but yeah, you know, we've got to start uh, winning uh, games and that. And, you know, in that four game period, I thought Man United were on the comeback. I wasn't, you know, getting uh, too um, excited in that um, because, you know, we've done that quite a few times, you know, done well. And then obviously it's been back to square one. Um, but I thought the, the the performance against Bournemouth was abysmal, absolutely abysmal. It was totally compounded to the performance I saw against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup and the performance I saw against Norwich in the league the other week. Um, you know, there were some parts where we may have dominated the game against Bournemouth. You know, we did well. We we kept the possession well. We passed the ball well, but couldn't really, you know, get any runs in behind because defensively Bournemouth did well. You know, we we had some chance in the game, but again, you know, we just there uh, wasn't uh, ruthless enough um, in front there of goal, and you know that uh, seems to be the problem. We just don't seem to have that end product um, up front at the moment, and you know that's um, an element um, of concern. Um, <laughs> Uh, like I said, you know, there is a lot of uh, players um, on our agenda, you know, who we could uh, go in for uh, next year, like I've already mentioned to you guys. Um, you know, Solskjaer uh, confirmed, um, you know, 
well, his policy during the summer, you know, was to recruit uh, young uh, British players. Now, I think he's still keen um, on sticking uh, to uh, the same uh, policy. Um, but I think it's actually, you know, very, very, very uh, probable, you know, that we're going to sign uh, Mario uh, Mandzukic um, in January. I think that's uh, going to um, happen. Um, I think um, he said that Sevilla were interested in him as well. Um, but I think, you know, he confirmed the other week that Mario Mandzukic um, has slashed um, his wage demands from 300 grand a week to 150 grand a week. So basically slashed his wage demands in half in order uh, to make uh, the move uh, to uh, Manchester United. Uh, reportedly, Juventus do want around, what, 9 or 10 million. So, you know, he's um, a cheaper solution, to be quite honest with you. You know, Mario Mandzukic um, has had um, a good uh, career. Um, he's now into his fifth season with Juventus. But his service to requirements now at Juventus, because obviously, you know, since the arrival um, of... You know, since the um, arrival um, of Maurizio Sarri, um, he hasn't played a single minute um, under Maurizio Sarri's uh, guidance. Um, you know, Mario Manzou just scored 44 goals in 162 games in all competitions uh, for uh, Juventus. Um, you know, I think Man United are obviously prepared to hand him around an 18-month contract. Um, but my only element of concern I've got about is recommending him in. You know, he's 33 years of age, he's Mario Mandzukic. So, you know, he's only got um, a year or two left um, in his uh, footballing career, you know, uh, you could you could say. But I think, you know, the good thing is he could show the likes of Daniel James, Rashford and Anthony Martial um, how to be uh, more um, effective um, in the box, uh, which is very, very good. And I think he would be a good um, adequate uh, replacement for Romelu Lukaku. You know, obviously he's not a long-term replacement for Lukaku but I do believe he'll probably be our first signing in January and he, if Solskjaer is still to be here but in January he will be our fourth signing um, under the um, Oligan and Solskjaer um, era um, but that's looking uh, very very probable um, obviously we do know there's been a lot of talks um, about uh, Moussa Dembele uh, from Lyon um, I think, you know, he would be uh, the right uh, calibre player uh, for Man United he's a player that can score goals he can lead the lines um you know, he's still uh, very, very young. Um, he is um, only uh, 23 uh, years in of age. And the also beneficial thing is, is that, you know, he's played in the Premier League, you know, when he was younger with Fulham because he actually you know, began his uh, senior uh, career uh, with Fulham. Then obviously after he left Fulham, went, he had a good couple of years in Scotland with Celtic. And I think so far he's done really, really well with Leon. He's in his second season with Leon. But I think if he came to Man United, he could replicate, you know, what he has uh, done uh, with all them teams. He's still got quite a few years left in his contract with Leon. He's under contract with them until 2023. You know, he's um, an out-and-out out, uh, number nine. And Leon got him for a reasonable figure. Leon paid um, around uh, £20 million for the player. I think Man United will have to pay a substantial amount though to get him. Um, if we you know we are uh, to, if we are to get him next year, we'll have to pay a substantial amount for him. So we'll also you know take that um, into the um, equation. Um, obviously, you know there has been a uh, recent uh, talks um, about Declan Rice uh, from West Ham. Um, I was reading a uh, recent uh, reports um, about him, and it did actually say you know um, you know we've identified him as our top priority signing uh, for uh, next uh, summer. But it actually, so what it means is it's. Very probable we could go in for him next summer, but we also could make a move for Declan Rice in January. Again, I think he would be the right uh, calibre player uh, for uh, Man United, you know, Declan Rice. He's actually, you know, cemented himself um, as a regular in West Ham's midfield. Um, he's well Premier League proven. He initially uh, learned um, his trade um, in the Premier League. Um, he is um, only uh, 20 uh, years of age. Um, he's primarily a defensive midfielder, but can also be uh, can also operate as a centre back, but primarily defensive midfielder, and holds his line well. Um, he breaks up the play well. He's also very good in the air, which is uh, very beneficial. Uh, I think uh, West Ham rate him at around uh, eighty million pounds, so he's going to cost uh, the club um, a substantial um, amount um, of money. Um, for West Ham in total, he's made eight to one appearances. That's in all competitions. Obviously, the vast majority of his appearances have come in the Premier League. He's made around 72 appearances um, in the Premier League, um, as you know, uh, Declan uh, Rice. But he's been at West Ham a number of years now. You know, he obviously you know, uh, was in uh, Youth Academy, but he's been there uh, for the team now for um, a number um, of years. Um, obviously, he began his uh, career with Chelsea. Um, you know, he was in there, you set up uh, for a number of, uh, for around seven years, he was in there, you set up, but. <coughs> But obviously, no. Um, I don't think he ever, you know, got in uh, to uh, Chelsea's first team. So he's um, another uh, player um, on our uh, current um, agenda. But you know, I think you know the players we was in for during the summer will reignite our interest in some of them in January, and you know we'll try and you know re we'll probably reignite our interest um, in some of them uh, next summer. So definitely, um, a massive uh, rebuild um, is needed um, at Manchester United. Um, <laughs> 
you know, but like I said, I don't think, you know, we'll, we'll ever be the team, you know, that we uh, was um, under um, Alex Ferguson. That's obviously, you know, something um, we've got to um, accept. You know, we're never going to achieve uh, achieve in terms of what we achieved under Ferguson. You know, Solskjaer definitely can't invoke Ferguson's legacy, you know, to save, um, you know, to save him um, at Manchester United, basically. Um, even though Ferguson did transform uh, Solskjaer um, into a winner and Solskjaer believes he's, you know, trying to follow Alex Ferguson's philosophy. He doesn't have Alex Ferguson's philosophy at Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, regarding, you know, you know, recruiting young players and that, you know, he's re he's replicating Ferguson in that aspect because obviously Ferguson, you know, obviously, you know, uh, did uh, that because he did develop a lot of young players, did Ferguson, you know, he controlled the transfer policies, he controlled a lot of the contracts. But, you know, we had so much success under Ferguson because we won 38 jobs under Ferguson. Um Obviously, the vast majority of our suit where, you know, one came under Ferguson, um, you know, you know, 26 uh, years um, of success. And, you know, Ferguson didn't win out in his uh, first uh, four uh, years um, at the football club when he got recommended in from Aberdeen back in, what, 1984, 1985. Um, but obviously, back in the old generation, managers, you know, got the time, you know, that they, they would have um, liked. Um, but, yeah, we do need to uh, see um, a lot of, uh, you know, changes um, at Manchester United and that. Um, but that's mainly um, everything to update you with. So, you know, the main part of this video is, you know, what manager, you know, would you recommend in to replace uh, Solskjaer? You know, would you recommend Chris Wilder, Wilder in from Sheffield United? Would you get Pochettino in? You know, would you get uh, Max Allegri in? You know, who would you recommend in uh, to the football club? You know, um, I would uh, like uh, to know. Uh, but in a way, I do feel sorry for Solskjaer anyway because I think the club have put him in a very difficult position. You know, I don't think, you know... Man United should have ever given him the job. I think that was one of the mistakes Man United did make, was obviously, you know, uh, giving him uh, the job. I think, you know, we gave him uh, the job uh, too soon. You know, we should have waited until the end of last season or we should have waited um, at some point um, until uh, this season. Um, but, yeah, it was a mistake uh, from uh, the football club. Um, but Man United have made several mistakes anyway in the last uh, six um, or seven years. I think you could say us getting rid of Ander Herrera uh, was also a mistake uh, because he's, he was arguably... One of our uh, best uh, players uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era, you know, we shouldn't basically, you know, uh, got rid of him. Um, we know, we are aware, you know, of the impact um, he did uh, make him um, in that midfield um, under um, Herrera. Um, and it infuriated me more that we let his contract run down and we let him uh, go um, on um, a free transfer. That really, really um, infuriated me more. Um, but yeah, he uh, ended up, you know, uh, leaving. Now, obviously, next year we've got to try and, uh, you know, recruit um, a replacement uh, for um, Andrea um, Herrera. Um, but that was another mistake uh, by uh, Manchester United. Um, you know, you know, and that. So, um, yeah, that's my life until today. So, drop your comments, like, on the channel. Um, I only did one video yesterday, didn't I? I was supposed to be doing another one, but I was, uh, you know, busy here yesterday, so I didn't uh, get, you know, uh, many time. I will be doing another one today. Um, I can definitely um, assure you that I will be doing um, another one uh, today. So, yeah, like I said, drop your comments, like, on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching, guys.